Did you know that Walmart is bigger than Home Depot, Kroger, Target, Sears, Costco, and Kmart combined? Now, Walmart can be a very polarizing business as they are usually in the news about once a week about how they run mom and pop stores out of business. I would like to inform you why Walmart has such a competitive advantage over all other retailers in the marketplace. Some of you may shop there, some of you may not. As you move on into careers in business, some of you may do business with Walmart, some of you may do business against them. I do shop at Walmart, and the company I work for ships approximately 165 truckloads per week just in the continental US. So I'd like to talk today about how Walmart supply chain helped them get their competitive advantage, how Walmart's sheer size helps them maintain that competitive advantage, and how Walmart's relationship with their suppliers will help them keep that competitive advantage for a long time to come. So let's get started with the way with how the products you buy are moved around the country. As we talk about how Walmart supply chain helped them get their competitive advantage. A supply chain is defined as the steps it takes to get a good or service from the supplier to the customer. And there are three main parts of a supply chain. There's the physical DC, that's a building that sits in the country that actually houses all the products that you buy. There's a transportation network, uh, over the road truck drivers that drive the product from the DC to the store. And then there's intellectual property that comes to each retailer and how they manage their inventory throughout their entire system. So the, the graphic up here is Walmart distribution centers, and, and you don't have to count them, but there's 42. Uh, and there's, they're, they're placed around the country pretty strategically. Now compare this to Coca-Cola, another well-known uh, manufacturer, in, well, they're a manufacturer in the United States. Coca-Cola has over 400 distribution centers in the US by comparison. I can tell you it's a lot more efficient and cost-effective to run 42 distribution centers than it is to run 400. Walmart also, Walmart strategically places the, the, these DCs around the country, and the reason they do it is truck drivers, older road truck drivers can drive 11 hours per day. Walmart puts its DCs around the country so that they are no more than eight hours from a, from a store. That way they can replenish the very next day. In Walmart's inventory, they usually keep three to four days on, on hand at any given time. Compare that to some other retail giants such as Super Value or Kroger, they can keep as much as 25 days. I had a chance to talk to Bob Donato. Now Bob is a master black belt in the Lean Six Sigma principles. And he said that the more inventory you have, the less likely it is you have the correct inventory. So what that means to Walmart is if they keep two to three days of supplies on hand at any given time, and their DCs are placed around the country so they can replenish the store the next day, as their customers come in and buy the product off the shelf, Walmart is very adaptable to replacing that the very next day so the shelves don't sit empty. So we talked about Walmart's supply chain. Now let's talk about how big Walmart is. And when we discuss how Walmart's sheer size helps them maintain that competitive advantage. Walmart has 4,200 stores in the US. On average, that equates to 84, 84 stores per state. This helps them with their customers as there's a generation now of people that what, what they want, when they want it right now. All that convenience is very helpful. Walmart also competes online with giants such as Amazon. Uh, their competitive advantage is when you use that service at Walmart, you can actually select to have the product delivered to the store and then go in and pick it up for free. That's a competitive advantage over a lot of other online retailers because you either have to buy into their huge service and order a lot of volume or pay $8 to have something that costs you $5 just to get it delivered to your house. We've talked about how Walmarts are everywhere. Now let's talk about how Walmarts gets the products it sells. As we discuss how Walmarts relationship with its suppliers will help them keep that, keep that advantage for a long time. Walmart is 40 to 50% of some suppliers business. This bar graph represents that. If you look at the left here, this is Walmart. Uh, you drop down to less than half is Kroger and Aldi. And then if you follow this line, this tail of this would just go on and on forever. Now, down here are all the mom and pop stores that are out there in the marketplace, and they're, and they're slowly fading away. 
What this means to a supplier is they make the majority of their money producing products for Walmart. They make a little bit of money on Kroger. As they get down here to these mom and pop stores, when they run products for them, that's basically line fill time. If Walmart didn't exist, the cost to serve the mom and pop stores would go up, and that would be passed on to the consumers as they come in to buy their products. Walmart is a retailer. Retailers don't make anything. They rely on their suppliers to make that. Has anybody ever shopped at Walmart and seen the little, the white boxes, they're generic, and they say America's Best Value on there? Show of hands, has anybody seen those? Thank you. So Walmart doesn't make those. They rely on their suppliers to make them for them. Case in point, a couple years ago, Lad and Ziploc make sandwich baggies for Walmart. And Walmart wanted somebody to make a generic white box with sandwich baggies in there, so they went to both of them and asked them to make that box for them. Well, neither one of them wanted to do it. They felt it cheapened their brand, so they refused. Walmart called their bluff and kicked them both off the store shelves. Now imagine as a, as a supplier, you lose 40, 40 to 50% of your business overnight. It didn't take two to three days. One of them went crawling back to Walmart and said, hey, we'll, we'll make that generic box for you if you let us put our regular stuff back on the shelf. Well, you can bet that the negotiation advantage is definitely squarely in the favor of Walmart right now. So the price they were going to pay is now a new price and it's not gonna be the same. In conclusion, we talked about how Walmart's supply chain their sheer size when it comes to customer convenience and their influence over their suppliers gives them a competitive advantage. So shop there, don't shop there. Do business with them, do business against them. Doesn't matter to me, but I do hope you have a better understanding of why they have such a stranglehold on the marketplace. Thank you. Any questions? There are two terms you use that I don't think were defined, DC uh, and Six Sigma. Okay. What are those things? So DC is a distribution center. It, it's a, uh, it, it, otherwise it's kind of known as a warehouse. So a manufacturer makes products and puts it in a truck and ships it to this building and the buildings again, uh, as on the chart, they're strategically located around the country. Um, it, it some, sometimes known as the mixing center. One customer will ship dog food, cat food, water bottles in there, and then when it leaves there and goes to the Walmart store, it's a mixed truck of all those items to go into the store. Uh, Lean Six Sigma is a, um, so Lean, Six Sigma is a factor of how many defects there could be per million parts. Uh, some of you may get into this, it's a lot of statistics. So to be world class, is to be Six Sigma, meaning if I have, I think it's 2.9 million parts at one defect. And then there's a sliding scale as it goes down. Um, that's the best way I can describe it. <coughs> uh, did you see that your company does distribution for Walmart? We actually, so I work at Baltimore, uh, mm -hmm. Post Consumer Brands. Now we make cereal and we ship Walmart, to, or we ship product to them, approximately 165 truckloads per week. All right, thanks, Steve. Thank you. We nice start. So when uh, Steve was talking about the sandwich bags, what sort of support was he using? Example. What kind of example? A real, yeah, a real or specific example, and that that was a good one, was it? He took a little bit of time with that, but it was illustrative of the point about how Walmart can basically control. Not only us, uh, but uh, not the consumer, but uh, uh, the suppliers. Very interesting. Uh, so basically, you're getting the same sandwich bag, yeah. just a different box, which is what we know about a lot of generics. If, if you walked out of a grocery store aisle and looked at a 